Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. In this video I'm going to talk about a unique and a bit weird motherboard from Minis Forum. It is this one, Minis Forum BD795M. The motherboard has a micro ADX size, but nevertheless it has a Ryzen 9 7945HX soldered or installed onto the motherboard, and we also have mobile SOD DDR5 memory slots. So yeah, that's a bit weird, but nevertheless the motherboard is still interesting and let me flip the camera, walk you through the motherboard, and then I will go through the test results to tell you what's working, what's not working, and what kind of performance you can expect from this mobile Ryzen 9 CPU. Minis Forum BD795M has a pretty simple layout. Let's start from this corner. Fun header, 8-pin CPU power header, CPU fan header, AIO pump fan header, then we have USB 3.0 for the front panel, then we have two DDR5 SOD memory slots, 24-pin motherboard power, two SATA 3 ports, CMOS battery, front panel buttons and LEDs, and empty corner over here, M.2 slot and another M.2 slot for PCI Express NVMe SSDs. Both of these um, M.2 slots are PCI Express 4.0 and both of them are connected to the CPU. Then over here in the middle we have a PCI Express X16, which is claimed to be PCI Express 5.0, but I don't have any 5.0 devices to test the claim. And finally over here we have an additional M.2 slot to install Wi-Fi Bluetooth adapters. Here we have two more fan headers, these are SysFan2 and SysFan3, front USB 2 header and front audio header. That's it, even though the motherboard is micro ADX, we don't have much extra. The rear I.O. is also pretty poor. Here we have clear CMOS button, HDMI output, DisplayPort output, two USB 3 ports, two USB 2 ports and a 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port. One last thing I forgot to mention is that Minus Forum BD795M is compatible with Intel LJ1700 CPU coolers, even though we have AMD CPU installed. I don't think it's an issue, but just something you need to know. So the test results. Here I need to start with the thermal issue I face it right out of the box. My motherboard came to me in a sealed package and that means that they did not cherry pick a golden sample for me, but it also means that they did not test it before shipping to me. So the thermal issue might be a unique instance for my particular sample or it could be a widespread problem. Anyway, in my case there were too much thermal paste under the IHS, the thermal paste quality was pretty quite questionable and the IHS screws were not tight enough, so the CPU would hit 100 degrees Celsius pretty quickly even under light load. The issue was pretty easy to fix though, I just removed the IHS, cleaned up all the mess, applied high quality MX4 thermal paste and tightened the screws. Here I need to mention that the IHS is made really well, the contact between IHS and the CPU is very precise and the contact place where the IHS is actually touching the CPU is made out of copper, it is not aluminum. So I am pleased to tell you that this IHS get the job done, even though I would wish it would be a bit thinner. Still, I cannot complain because if they would make the IHS thinner, the standard Intel LJ1700 CPU coolers would not work here. With the thermal issue sorted out, let's go into the actual test results, starting with the Radeon 610M, which is iGPU of Ryzen 9 7945HX. On the motherboard we have two display outputs, HDMI and display port. HDMI is unfortunately limited to 4K 60Hz, while with the display port you can get 4K 144Hz. I have also tested all of the USB and SATA ports and everything works just as it should. Smartphone on the other hand is not that good. The smartphone seems to work only for the CPU fan header and even though we have additional settings in the BIOS for two extra system fans, I could not get it to work. And I have reported this issue to Minis Forum, they confirmed that my findings are correct. So basically we get a standard Chinese problem where smartphone is only working with the 4-pin PWM fans and only with a single fan header. 
Nevertheless, PCI Express connectivity is good here. We have PCI Express X16, which is claimed to be PCI Express 5.0. I do not have PCI Express 5.0 devices, so I have tested only PCI Express 4.0. At the same time, PCI Express X16 slot supports buffication, and you can split it to X8, X4, X4, or X4, 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 X4. This is very good if you want to install multiple NVMe drives, or if you have a graphics card that has additional M.2 slots. So you could buffocate your PCI Express X16 slot to dedicate 8 lanes to the graphics card, and then 4 and 4 lanes to the additional M.2 slots on the graphics card. The M.2 slots for SSD drives are both PCI Express 4.0 and both are connected to the CPU, which is also very good. The M.2 Wi-Fi slot is working and I have tested Intel Wireless AC9260 adapter. It comes with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and both worked with no issues. With audio and network, I did not detect any issues, both are working just fine. And the network is 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, so everything works here just as it should. For the VRM, I cannot say much, and I didn't find any online specification about the components installed. What I can say for sure is that with this Ryzen 9 7945HX, it works just fine. After 30 minutes of ADA64 stress test, when entire system consumes about 140 watts of electricity, the VRM did not heat up for more than 55-60 degrees Celsius. So this is a pretty decent result, and I did not have any additional fans to actually cool the VRM zone. For the features, we have work and sleep mode. Overclocking is kinda limited, but it is possible. We have precision boost overdrive or PBO settings in the BIOS, and there you can do some fine tuning for your CPU. I did not try to overclock my CPU to the limit because I did not have an appropriate cooler for that and I did not want to risk stability, but I can say that it works and you can increase the clock frequency of the CPU. On the other hand, AMD Ryzen Master unfortunately does not work with the Minis Forum BD795M. RAM tuning and overclocking is also possible. Officially, BD795M supports DDR5-5200, but I have DDR5-5600 memory sticks and I overclocked it to DDR5-5400 with no issues whatsoever. Unfortunately, I could not verify if you can enable XMP because my memory sticks do not have XMP profile. Still, you have possibility to tune voltage and the tune timings of your memory, so if you want to go that out, you can further increase the performance of your mobile DDR5 memory sticks. Resizable bar, PC Express buffication, restore and power loss and clear CMOS, all of these important functions are present and working. For the extra notes I can say that the power consumption sensor and the motherboard temperature sensors seem to work fine on Minis Forum BD795M. It is important to say because many of the Chinese motherboards have these sensors either missing or simply reporting wrong values. Now let's talk a little bit about the performance of this Ryzen 9 7945HX. If we look at the hardware specification, this is basically a mobile copy of the desktop Ryzen 9 7950X. We have 16 cores, 32 threads. These 16 cores are presented in two CCDs. Each CCD has 8 cores. Just like with the desktop CPU, we have a primary and a secondary CCD, where the primary CCD would usually clock higher and thus heat up higher. The secondary CCD mostly kicks in when we have uh, multi-threading workloads, where the single-core performance is not that important. And of course, we also have the IO die and the iGPU. All in all, with absolutely no tweaking in the BIOS, this mobile Ryzen 9 7945HX is very close in performance to the desktop Ryzen 9 7950X. So, for example, let's take a look at the Geekbench 6 results. So with the mobile 7945HX, I get about 17,500 points for the multi-core score and almost 3,000 points for the single-core points. And according to Geekbench, a Ryzen 9 7950X and multi-core test scores about 19,500 points. So the difference is a bit more than 2,000 points. The single-core performance is almost identical. It is still just under 3,000 points, so the difference is about 40 points. 
In Cinebench R23, we get about 32 against 38,000 points for all CPU cores and about 2,000 points with both of the CPUs with a single CPU core used. In Cinebench 2024, Minis BD 795M scores about 1700 points with all CPU cores and 116 points with a single CPU core. Additionally, I also add links to the TimeSpy Extreme and 3 Mark CPU profile results. If you're interested, just open the links in the video description and compare these 7945HX to whatever other CPU you would wish to. The memory performance running DDR5 cl 40 is not amazing, but it is also not disastrous. The read, write, and copy speed is pretty good because it is DDR5. We get 70, 66, and 56 gigabyte per second, but the memory latency at 76 nanoseconds is not impressive. Surely, if you go and manually tweak your RAM timings, you can decrease the memory latency, but I want to provide the out-of-the-box experience so you know what to expect for sure. The memory latency is mostly important for the gaming results, and here I have a few numbers for you. Unfortunately, I don't have 7950X on hand to make a one-to-one -one comparison, so I am forced to compare with what I have, and I have only Ryzen 5 5600. In all tested games, Ryzen 9 7945HX is significantly faster than Ryzen 5 5600. Here I tested a bunch of different games, uh, Coral Island, Counter-Strike 2, Cyberpunk 2077, F123, Kingdom Come Deliverance, Stalker 2, and Assassin's Creed Mirage. In certain cases, Ryzen 9 7945HX delivers minimal FPS on the level of average FPS with the Ryzen 5. For example, in Cyberpunk 2077 with Ryzen 9 we have 147, 183 FPS, while Ryzen 5 5600 is only good for 105, 150 FPS. The same we can see in Stalker. With the Ryzen 9 we get 54, 77 FPS and with the Ryzen 5, 30, 52 FPS. Similar picture in Assassin's Creed Mirage as well. 154, 255 FPS against 104, 163 FPS. Of course, this is not a fair comparison because these are two totally different CPUs, totally different platforms, totally different prices, but that's what I have on my hands right now, so you can at least understand somehow what kind of level of performance you can expect with the Ryzen 9 7945HX installed on the Minis Forum BD795M. Making a conclusion for this video is pretty hard. This Minis Forum BD795M motherboard is pretty expensive. Right now it costs about 480 US dollars, and then you may or may not need to pay VAT and shipping. So, depending on how much you have to pay to get this motherboard, I may or may not recommend it. From the technical point of view, the motherboard doesn't have any major flaws and I really like it. Mobile Ryzen 9 7945HX, according to the specs and according to the performance, is very close to the desktop Ryzen 9 7950X. Unfortunately, the gaming performance will not be as high because we are limited to the mobile DDR5 memory modules, and the mobile modules are pretty hard to find, if not impossible, at high memory frequency and low memory latency. On the other hand, the mobile Ryzen 9 is significantly more power efficient. For the desktop Ryzen 9 7950X, you most likely would want a liquid cooler, while this mobile Ryzen 9 7945HX was happy under a tiny LJ 1700 CPU cooler. Of course, I had to remove this uh, IHS, uh, repaste it and tighten the screws to ensure proper contact between the IHS and the CPU, but once that was done, the CPU stayed cool enough with my tiny CPU cooler. Another thing to keep in mind is the security aspect. As of right now, I don't have any information if Minis Forum will release any future BIOS updates or how to apply BIOS updates for this Minis Forum motherboard, if in the future there will be some security flaws or some issues discovered with the Ryzen CPUs, these holes or these problems must be patched and the BIOS updates must be released. I don't know if Minis Forum will do that and if they will do that, how to install BIOS. As of right now, as I said, I don't have any information and the Minis Forum did not tell me anything in this aspect. 
All in all though, I really like Minis Forum BD795M with the Ryzen 9 7945HX installed. And I even thought about keeping this motherboard for myself, but unfortunately the connectivity is just a bit too limited for me. I need at least two PCI Express slots, one to install a graphics card and the other one to install a video capture card. And that is simply not possible with BD795M motherboard from Minis Forum. With that I have to say, thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and I hope if you can find one for a good price, you can enjoy it just as much as I enjoyed mine.